Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Office. Today I'm going to talk to you about the semantics for the term language that we've introduced in the previous videos for the Aristotelian syllogistic. This is going to be in two parts. First, I'm going to give you kind of the informal background of what we mean by the semantics and some of the informal notions that we're going to try to capture. And then in the next video, I will give you the nitty gritty details and the formal definitions. The key component for the semantics for a term language is something called an interpretation. An interpretation is a function that if I give you one of the non-logical symbols in the language, you give me back what that symbol means. This is basically what a function is like. So our language has the four copulae. These are the logical components of the language and their meaning is always fixed. What that meaning is, we'll define in a little bit, but we don't have to worry about that at this point. What we're interested in is how to give meaning to the non-logical part of our language. So intuitively, we want to be able to say what items each individual categorimatic term is true of. So the categorimatic terms, white, running, animal, etc., these are all various properties that things can have. And so we want our interpretation will tell us what are the things that have those properties? Or what do the words mean? What do the symbols that we have in our language mean? So as an example, just informally, let's consider a term language, we'll call it L1, that has the four logical copulae and then non-logical terms A, B, C, D, and E. And these are all capital letters, remember our convention for the notation for the categorimatic terms. Now, these, could, these letters could stand for anything, but we could say, well, let A stand for animals, B for bats, C for cats, D for dogs, and E for elephants. Nice and mnemonic, gives us a lovely zoo that we can work with. Now, intuitively, you already know what the truth values of certain sentences using these terms are going to be. For instance, if I say, no cats are dogs, sitting there nodding your head saying, yeah, yeah, good, she's saying something true. But if I tell you that some elephants are bats, you're going to be like, no, Dr. Logic, you're, you're crazy. Animals, though, we could say all bats are animals. Some animals are cats, some animals are elephants, some animals are not elephants. So intuitively, you have an understanding, once I tell you what each of these uh, categorimatic terms means, you have an intuitive understanding of what sorts of, of sentences are true. So we could do exactly the same thing with a different term language. So let me introduce to you another term language, call it L2. We're really good at naming things, logicians are. This also has the four logical copulae, and then its non-logical vocabulary are going to be the capital letters D, E, H, O, and W. And I can say, well, Let's interpret these symbols as D stands for dwarves, E for elves, H for hobbits, O for orcs, and W for wizards. And then if you have a robust knowledge of the Lord of the Rings and the Silmarillion and Middle Earth, you can come up with your own true and false sentences involving these terms. So all that we're going to be doing when we give the formal definitions is making these informal ideas precise. So Right now, it makes sense to be able to say, yes, if we interpret C as cat and A as animal, then capital A, little a, C, A-A-C, animal belongs to all cat, is a true sentence. But this requires you to have kind of knowledge of biology. You got to know what cats are. And if you're dealing with a subject matter where this isn't necessarily true, you don't necessarily know the extent of an English term, or maybe there is uncertainty, maybe, maybe we don't actually know, maybe cats are actually a type of fungus. So we don't want to have that sort of empirical concerns, worries, feeding into our logic. This is why we will make a more precise way of saying what exactly an interpretation of a term language is. And we will see that in the next video. See you in a bit. Cheers.